Good morning, good afternoon, good evening guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel for the newcomers, my name is Didi, and there on the background, two Dutch friends, they visited me once in beautiful Portugal at the Bam Bam Beach, and they are now also Phuket, they are also traveling the world, amazingly, also of course Bitcoiners, I just ran into them this morning here on the beach, so it took a little bit longer for me to uh, create this video, not only that reason, but also yesterday, I had some drinks. Yes, and some drinks, uh, you can see now over here, were a lot of drinks. It was Prosecco, my Dutch friend Lex told me, let's go to that restaurant and have some drinks. And we did one bottle, two bottle, three bottle, four bottle, five bottles to celebrate. Bitcoin is an amazing bull market again. Now, today's video, four amazing Bitcoin chart, uh, beautiful, of course, a trading tip. Yes, a travel tip. Yes, talking about the news and about everything else that comes to my mind, if I can still think correct, because yes, I'm still a little bit tired, but let's jump into the charts first. The first chart today, guys, is the four hour chart, and it shows you beautifully how to buy and the sell signal on the trading setup that we use worked perfectly again yes and we are also visiting those levels that i've been talking about for a couple of days already around that 35k level so i hope you put your buy orders there because then you have now automatically bought bitcoin again a little bit cheaper than the 37k let's zoom out into some amazing other charts guys this is the first chart guys this is the bitcoin price history btc log skill is the orange line btc linear skill is the white line so the normies see a bubble do you see that first bubble in the white line that was the 2017 bull market do you now see those double top bubble in the uh, chart in 2021 that was the last bull market so yes a lot of people talk about bitcoin as if they see a bubble because they look at the bitcoin linear scale but you can see that the latest bubble of 2021 made the bubble of 2017 look like a little little blip in the chart and the next bull market is going to be even higher than 70k so the next bull market you will see that that bull market bubble will make 2021 look like a very little blip in the chart and 2017 almost like disappear now if you look in the log scale you can see that bitcoin aside of how volatile this has been going upwards all the time and we will keep going upwards all the time we will go above 100k and in the far future above 500k and in the very far future even above a million dollar per bitcoin so it's just the perspective of how did you look at the charts guys next chart this chart is showing you a beautiful bitcoin price from 2012 to 2019 uh, versus 2016 to 2023 so you can see in those seven years how Bitcoin has moved. And you can see that both of these orange lines on the top are moving kind of in the same way. And yes, that means that Bitcoin does rhyme. It doesn't repeat always, but it does rhyme. And you can see that the rolling for your compound annual growth rate, the CAGR, is still at beautiful levels around the 50%. Yes, of course, there's some bear market years where we only have 25% return on investment that year, compound annual growth rate. But on average, we are still 50% and higher, between 50 and 100%. Previously, we were between 100 and 200%. So if we keep this level for another four years between 50 and 100%, it means that every year you are compounding your annual growth in capital with 50 to 100 percent per year you don't get that in interest on your bank you don't get that kind of returns on investment on any other investment not in gold not in stocks nowhere so please understand that bitcoin is still giving you the best return of investment possible if you compound the annual growth rate in the cagr guys very interesting chart now we have this chart, the dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin charts. Um, this is dollar cost averaging for four years. You can see the different colors of line. Uh, if you would have started in 2022 and you would have bought the same amount of US dollar in Bitcoin every Monday on the first Monday of that year. And if you started to do that in 2022, you would have now paid in total an average price of 25,600 per Bitcoin. So you would be 10,000 US dollar per Bitcoin in profit. If you would have started in 2021, you would have paid 30,000 in average per Bitcoin. So you would have still be in profit, but a little bit less profit. If you would have started in 2020, you would have an average paid 19,000. 
In 2019, you would have paid 12,000. 2018 to 2021, you would have 9,000. 2017 to 2020, somewhere where we went all in, you would have on average paid 4,300. You would be in a shitload of profit. And if you started, when I started mining in 2013, 14, you would have an average paid now right between 200 and 500 US dollar per Bitcoin. So this is what dollar cost averaging does to your capital. So please pause the video and analyze the prices so you start to understand how dollar cost averaging can help you tremendously with your Bitcoin portfolio. I hope you really enjoyed the charts, guys. Yes, it were again beautiful charts showing you that you need to look at the bigger picture of Bitcoin. Don't freak out, zoom out, look at the huge bull run that's up front of us. Yes, make sure you are going to be part of that bull market by holding your Bitcoins. I should say by hodling your Bitcoins. Hodl, hodl, hodl. But you need to buy first to be able to hodl. To so start to buy today, buy, 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 and then hodl, hodl, hodl. 2025 top, you start to dollar cost average out. 2026, seven, you start to dollar cost average in again. Very simple plan, the man with the plan on the beach after some bottles of Prosecco. Let's jump into the trading tip. The trading tip for today, guys, is about the Fibonacci retracement tool. A lot of people always ask me how it works. I'm not going to explain it completely because I will make a beautiful course about that very soon for all my VIPs. Uh, but the Fibonacci retracement tool is a beautiful tool to find support and resistance level after a huge pump in Bitcoin or after a huge dump in Bitcoin. So you can use that tool to take the low and take the high of the last couple of days for example if you're trading the day chart and then you can see to which levels which percentages mostly bitcoin will drop uh, there is a very beautiful documentary i think on netflix about fibonacci which shows you that fibonacci is not only used like in crypto but in everything in life because these all these numbers have a specific idea behind it so just check that if you can find it google it or maybe watch the illegal version on youtube but uh, there is a very very beautiful documentary about fibonacci and how it started to exist and what it meant and what it means now for example also in investment but the main levels i always take a look at is the 50 percent and yes the 61.8 percent which of course is the golden ratio that is how they call it so we often when bitcoin pumps and you draw the fibonacci levels pull back to that 50 or 61 percent level so that is where you put your buy orders again so you understand when to buy so that was a very short trading tip uh, I don't have any more thoughts in my head about trading tips at the moment. So let's jump into the next part. <laughs> let's jump into the travel tip. A travel tip for also the non-Bitcoiners, but the people that ask me always, where do you hide your jewelry and maybe some cash money and uh, your necklaces and all that expensive stuff if you don't have a safe in your room? Even if you have a safe in the room, it's not safe, guys, because most hotels, they have this uh, reserve key, so they can always open your safe if they need. But you could, for example, uh, use an uh, empty shampoo bowl. And then in an empty shampoo bowl, you put your necklace and some money, and you can put some rings and all that stuff in, and you just put the lid on again, and then you have a beautiful hiding space. You put it in the shower, nobody will expect you having luxury stuff in a shampoo bottle. Just one of the examples that you could do. Of course, you can also buy, for example, a beautiful pair of very cheap shoes with a big sole, and then you just scrape out all the sole, and then you put everything in there, and then put again, uh, you know, that the sole thing that is on the sole where your foot is on, back on it, so nobody will ever notice that as well. So many hiding places that you can use. These are not my hiding places for the ones asking, where I use completely different setups, <laughs> but, uh, become creative and make it a beautiful challenge for your family for example you tell your kids how can we hide stuff in a very cool way and then the kids will see this as a beautiful adventure oh look we need to invent something that we can protect our treasure so something like that and the kids are really creative they are way more creative than we are because we already are like older people uh, that drink up now and then <laughs> stop talking about drinking uh, but the kids they have really cool ideas so ask your children if you would have something that you want that you don't want that anyone can get that like a very valuable item where would you hide it please come up with a plan to hide it in a very creative way so that was the travel tip today be creative when it comes to hiding your luxury stuff 
I don't have any special news for today, guys, but there is some real cool thing I want to share with you guys. The 11th till the 17th of February, there is a beautiful event in Phuket. It's organized by Zanella Tihic. She calls herself an activator. She's a manifesting professional. Uh, she's like a life coach and she has coached a lot of people and she did a very good job in that. And now she's organizing this very luxury retreat in Phuket. I think it's in a $10 million visa with all the luxury that you can have. She invited me to be a speaker at that event. I will be there as a motivational speaker talking about Bitcoin, blockchain and life and everything else. And of course, answering all the people's questions when it comes to my view of lifestyle that we live as a family and which means flexibility is the new stability but if you want to sign up go to her uh, instagram it's called zanella Tihic. i will put the link down below and you will find all the information i think there's still a few seats available but it's running full very quickly now that was the news for the day. Uh, the other news, all about Bitcoin and everything. Yeah, there is so much news, but it's all not like really powerful news that I want to share with you. Of course, the SEC, they are still considering, should we approve the spot ETF in Bitcoin or shouldn't we approve the spot ETF in Bitcoin? I think this guy must be getting sick of himself when he looks into the mirror like he doesn't even know who he is anymore. By now, I think that bold, ugly guy, I won't call him our dirty names, but this guy, um, he is now fighting BlackRock. BlackRock requested an approval for a spot ETF in Bitcoin. And this guy thinks, I don't even want to pronounce his name anymore, but this guy thinks he can fight BlackRock. BlackRock's score at the moment is this, 575 against one. So of all the spot ETFs they requested, 575 were approved, one was not approved. Do you think that Bitcoin will be the second not approved spot ETF. I think this guy, I will say his name one time, Gensler, Gary Gensler, that guy, I think that guy is going to lose his job if he doesn't approve the spot ETF. So we can keep discussing and keep making news about the spot ETF and Bitcoin. We all know at the end it will be approved. So don't react to that situation, but anticipate. Anticipating means you're reacting now before it is approved. So you should start buying Bitcoin now before it is officially approved. Because when it will be officially approved, it will be too expensive again for you to buy. So anticipate instead of reacting, guys. Very powerful life lesson over there. Now let's jump into the next part. And that is the question of one of the followers, guys. And I saw this question a lot of times. I don't even know it was a question yesterday, but it kept hanging in my head because a lot of people ask, Didi, if we go to Phuket, where should we stay? In my honest opinion, the most beautiful part is the part where I stay, and it is called the Bang Tau area, Talang. Why the Bang Tau area, Talang? Because it has beautiful long beaches. It has a few small tropical beaches near. It has a beautiful center with local Thai restaurants, but also with a very exclusive cuisine, hot cuisine. You know, like last day I was in Project Artisan. Project Artisan, I wasn't there. I, I drove by that place, Project Artisan, like many times. And every time I was like, what kind of restaurant will this be? So yesterday we went, have dinner there at Project Artisan with my good friend Lex and A, and it was amazing. Guys, it was really amazing. I'm not being paid by Project Artisan. I didn't even get a discount yesterday for talking about them. I even made a beautiful story on Instagram. So next time when I come, Project Artisan. Artisan, give me a little bit discount for all the promotions I do for you. I don't even know if she's French. I think she, the, the owner is from Czechoslovakia. But uh, Project Artisan had amazing food and amazing vibe. It was on a Thursday, because on Thursday there is always live music and there was a singer she was beautiful, but her voice was even more beautiful. Goosebumps voice. So next Thursday, she will be there again. If you want to have goosebumps, not only from the food, but also from the vibe and the voice, then go to Project Azazan. And probably you will see me there as well, because I really like the food. The food, they had these spare ribs, you know, these, these, how do you call this? Ribs, ribs. If you take the bone, if you just hold the bone, the, the meat falls on like, like this from the bone. Amazing food. All the other food also amazing. So see you next week at Project Artisan. If you're coming there, I will be there as well. Hopefully I will get a discount. So Mrs. Project Artisan, I want discount. <laughs> so that was the answer to the question. I would stay in the Laguna Bangtao area. 
I really like that area. You have all kinds of beautiful things to do. It's beautiful central. It's not too far from the airport. Uh, it's not too far from all the beautiful spots in the island. And it still has this relaxed feeling as well. Because look around me, the beach in the morning, it's still pretty empty, guys. It's still pretty empty. You can even put up your tents over here. You have campsites over there as well. You can do whatever you want. And if you have a little bit more budget, you rent yourself a beautiful yacht over there. Now, so that was my answer to the question that often is asked to me. If you want more like hippie vibe, yeah, I think you should be somewhere in Hawaii. If you want more like English pub vibe, you need to go to Kamala. If you want a little bit more party, party, party vibe, you go to Patong. Patong is where all the party happens, where all the big clubs are. For example, the 6th of December, um, the huge DJ Steve Aoki is performing in Patong. I think the 3rd of December, we have Fisher uh, playing here, uh, I think at, uh, at, at the beach club. I forgot the name. Ibiza Beach Club or something like that. Yeah. So there's a lot of things to do if you're young also here. But also for the older people, you can just walk the beautiful beach or visit the beautiful temples or anything else over here, guys. So that was my answer to the question of the followers. Let's jump into the next part. So the next part, I need to walk very far because I don't see people nowhere. And I want to give you another beautiful booty at the end of the video. No, guys, the next part is, of course, the inspirational part, a life lesson. I think the life lesson for today is that there is a different way of thinking for everyone out there. But there is one thing that people often think and I think they should rethink. Because often you say, ah, I hope those people are going to let me. I hope they are going to let me do this. I hope they are going to let me do that. I hope they are going to let me do this. I think you need to rephrase that. You need to say, let's see who's going to stop me if I do this. Let's see who's going to stop me if I do that. Let's see who's going to stop me if I do it this way. That is the way you should be thinking. You shouldn't be thinking, who is letting me? That is fucking bashed into your skull in those fucking schools that want to teach you to obey. Can I go please to the bathroom? Fucking pointing your finger in the air to go to a bathroom? If I need to go to the bathroom, I should be allowed just to go up and go to the bathroom. Let's see who stops me. I'm not gonna ask who's letting me. That's like a retarded rule. I need to piss. You just stand up, you go to the toilet and tell the teacher, hey, I'm gonna take a piss. Why would that be necessary to be a request? Why do you always need to ask yourself, hopefully they will let me? It is not about hopefully they will let me. It is about who will stop you. Nobody is gonna stop you. If you have the balls to do whatever you want to do, for the women, you probably don't have balls, but you know what I mean, then nobody is gonna stop you. And when they stop you, you can also say, ah, sorry, I didn't realize I was doing something to offend you, or I didn't realize I was doing something that was not allowed. They won't directly punish you or something. It's like not, not the death penalty for trying to do stuff the way you want to do it. So very important, in my honest opinion, is to always think who is gonna stop me instead of who is gonna let me. Just do it. Live the life you want to live to the fullest and then check out who's gonna stop you. If you always think who's gonna let me, who's gonna let me, who's gonna let me, it could mean that you will never start what you want to do because you're afraid that they won't let you without even trying it. How can you be afraid of something if you didn't even experience it or try it? It's not about who's gonna let you. It's about who's gonna stop you. Coming to the end of the video, guys, um, I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about these perfect endings I have in every video again and again every day? <laughs> this is really not coincidence anymore, I think. I think they really want to be in the image, guys. Now, uh, of course, also on Saturday, always doing uh, English AMA. On Sunday, doing uh, Dutch AMA live sessions, of course. I wish you a beautiful day. Enjoy this day to the fullest. Enjoy it completely every single minute of the day. Also, have an amazing weekend. Enjoy the Saturday. Enjoy the Sunday. And yes, I wish you a beautiful Friday evening, of course, as well. Hopefully to see you tomorrow again in one of the lives. And yes, don't forget to use the links down below the video, guys, because that is the way how I pay for my Prosecco. <laughs> wish you a beautiful day. See you tomorrow again, guys. Bye-bye.